Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I have a lot of videos to show you guys today, as I always do. Uh, this is a morning show, the last best morning show in Missoula, and I'm here to talk about everything Missoula from uh, First Friday, Flagship Friday, um, All Your Weather Friday, and of course, your Friday events, and you have your city council committee reports as well. But let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. It's looking like uh, it's going to be a little warmer this weekend, uh, a lot warmer than it has been. Um, so if you guys are planning on going out and about into the wintry weather um, this weekend, maybe the a chance to do it. Uh, it is currently 21 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 28. You have slight chance of wintry mixes happening from today to tonight from 20% to 60%. Saturday, you're going to have a wintry mix. Then rain is likely happening Saturday night, and your high is going to be 35. Your low is going to be 25 um, Saturday night. Well, Sunday, your high is going to be uh, 33, and your low is going to be 25. So let's take a look of, of onthesnow.com. I took this uh, little snapshot from their uh, their website showing about how much inches and how much snow they've gotten. It doesn't look like there's been too much. Black Mountain Ski Area had one inch of snow in the last 72 hours. But, of course, most of these... Uh, uh, resorts, uh, ski places are all good to go. So if you want to go to Bridger Bowl, Whitefish, Big Sky, Discovery Ski Area, Lost Trail, Maverick Mountain, Snow Bowl, um, they have 50 inches to 72 inches of powder, Red Lodge, uh, Showdown Montana, but of course Trent uh, Pass Ski Area, their information is not available. So uh, that's kind of what's happening in terms of weather and uh, snow. So let's talk about some news that's happening in and around the city of Missoula. Of course, there's not much gender diversity when it comes to dean of uh, as dean of libraries. Shaylee Zhang is the only woman serving as a permanent dean at the University of Montana. The provost dean Beverly Edmund is serving likely her last semester as UM hires a permanent chief academic officer. With so many buyouts made by faculty these past months, the departments are adjusting to these changes. And in the Missoula, notice the amount of female leaders at the university system. Uh, search committee members have talked about ensuring a diverse uh, applicant pool. With the search is a, a priority for uh, Seth Bodner, the uh, current president, as Sheila Stearns uh, basically passes the mantle over to him. Um, and the uh, committee has asked people uh, to turn in applications before the end of January for full consideration of any positions. They're uh, specifically looking for female uh, leaders as well, and they're also looking inside the uh, faculty uh, for um, hiring within for leadership and whatnot. So that's uh, what's happening there. What do you guys think? Uh, what, how should the university fix a diversity problem that they have? So uh, I'll let you guys kind of think about that, and we'll move on to the next topic, which is your state news. If you're afraid of going to work because you could die, uh, your fears are actually substantiated because Montana ranks number three in deaths related to work injuries. For every one 100,000 workers in Montana, the BLC Census for Fatal Occupational Injuries found that 7.9 died as a result of injuries sustained at work. A slight increase over the previous year, only Wyoming and Alaska recorded higher rates of workplace deaths. The rate has increased in each of the past three years in which data is available and most recently rose to 36 per 100,000 workers, the highest since 2010. In um, 2016, Montana had uh, 38 work-related deaths, according to the BLS, BLS data for less than more states with higher populations. Of course, these are also per capita results because the, uh, the state of Montana has 1 million people. Wyoming also has one of the lowest amount of people in the state. They have the lowest population of any state in the, in the United States, in, which is Wyoming. So j just put those factors into uh, um, to, to account as well. So BLS Census of Fatal Occupational Injuries said that the people like to have a silver bullet to I implement across the board on worker health and safety, but there are a lot of factors and there's a lot going on what we need to pay attention to. In national news, let's switch to this camera again, uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture predicts consumers will be buying less for beef, pork, lamb, chicken, and turkey in the early 2018 than the start of 2017, but of course not so for eggs. Uh, NPR for, uh, forward, uh, forwards a report saying that the egg prices during this, uh, the first three months of 2018 are likely to be more than 35% higher than they were during the same period of 2017. USDA's uh, Economic Research uh, Service says the increase from about 80 80 cents to a dozen grade A large eggs at, at the start of 2017 due uh, to predictions of $1 to uh, one 
to uh, basically from 106 to 112 for, uh, for a dozen is due to several months of increased sales. Uh, of course, since avian flu uh, reared its old head by, uh, by in 2015, the reactions to this and, uh, and the other organizations mean new rules in regulating egg sales, making the supply go down and demand go up. Uh, the European market was further uh, dented in August when an insecticide that used to control fleas and pets may have in a, inappropriately used by cleaning crews by the Netherlands to reduce lice in chickens. The BBC reported that the European Union bans the use of insecticides on, these, on, on the chickens for any uh, food production animals. And millions of eggs were actually pulled off the market. Uh, U.S. egg producers appear to be increasing the size of their laying flocks, which ultimately will increase the supply and put, uh, potentially push prices down. So USDA also says that uh, the first three months will be uh, hard, harder on people because uh, of the egg price increase. But they said that since the supply will be going up, it, the, hopefully the... Uh, demand will go down and drive the prices down as well. So that's kind of what's happening with your news. Um, I got some new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT, and when I come back, i got to talk about those movies that are coming out this weekend, which aren't much. Um, Patrick, yesterday uh, from the state, gave a great summary of what our epic fire season was like la this last year. Um, critical that we, uh, that we uh, rely on the collaboratives to, to find a, a, you know, a, a narrative that really uh, makes sense from a scientific standpoint and a uh, one that we can all get behind uh, in terms of uh, you know how we manage fire on the ground. We all know it's going to be a part of our lives forever, and um, and uh, to not get caught up in a lot of the, the, the false negative, false narratives that are that are kicking around out there. Uh, it's also, I think, an important way to foster mutual learning. We heard that yesterday several times from folks. Um, Ed, the education of each other, figuring out you know where the other is coming from, uh, um, is, is is critical. So it's, it's sort of the educating each other. I think is a, is a, is a huge benefit for the for the collaboratives. So we can see the sublingual pouch, and I'll also point out that this bird is pink, and it's pink from contact with unripe white bark pine cones. The anthocyanin pigments uh, pigments actually will discolor the feathers. And uh, we can see that the structure of white bark pine with its vertical branches, horizontally directed cones act as landing platforms for the nutcrackers, and they are able to grip well as they're digging into these cones. Uh, seed dispersal by nutcrackers actually determines the distribution of white bark pine on the landscape. Where white bark pine grows locally is a combination of nutcracker cast site selection and the environmental suitability of that site together. Nutcrackers actually cache in tundra. They store seeds above the current tree line. So as temperatures warm, we have an automatic in, uh, rise in elevation of tree line with uh, changing climate. What better way to control somebody than to make them need you? And heroin is, is horrendous. Heroin is probably the worst drug ever known to, to the human race. Um, very few people get off heroin. Um, you know, the heroin is on the rise in the U.S. Um, as a federal agency, it's very alarming to see this. It's all over the U.S. at Kalispell. Heroin is on the rise in Kalispell. Um, there's, a, there's a large uh, influx, a slush of uh, vehicle break-ins and um, home invasions, and, and this is due to the heroin for the most part. People, once you get addicted to heroin, you will not stop at anything to get more. So they're breaking into cars at night. And, that's from the heroin epidemic. Alcohol as well is, is used uh, throughout Mexico. That's pretty much how they control um, those, those women in those, those brothels. Um, and these women are performing about 10 to 15 sex acts per night. And they have to consume um, an alcoholic beverage with each, with each one of their clients. Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about some movies that are coming out this week. We're kicking things off for all your uh, um, pre-critic needs uh, by starting out with the newest and greatest movie of all time and the franchise is um, <laughs> is the Insidious Chapters. It's the uh, Lost Key, and they're making movie uh, some more movies about it. So this is, um, let me find my notes real quick. So, Insidious, the Last Key. 
With such horror movies that follow family struggle against the forces of evil comes yet another movie with, within the city, Insidious franchise. The last key is this uh, side title, and it follows the parapsychologist in the form of a haunting that follows her home to haunt her family and make the evil take over their world. And jump scare happens and more of this wonderful horror movie because, you know, Insidious is really good about having jump scares. Moving on. In between, the next movie is a doozy because... No one's probably going to be able to see it here in Missoula as the synopsis follows three Palestinian women trying to live their life in a modern world while paving their own way through without disrespecting their heritage of being Muslim. Long story short, this is about a drama of knowing oneself and probably having issues with family that wants uh, some more traditional values. Well, it's like, hey, I'm growing up in the modern world. I want to have my own modern values, but I'm not going to actually take away from the values that you've kind of taught me over the years, blah, 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 that kind of thing. Misunderstanding, um, drama. Some people, yeah, it's, it's so it's basically kind of like, leave me alone, mom and dad. Let me do me, and you can do you. That's kind of what this movie's about. Um, strange Ones. Um, this next movie is a bit strange, uh, but <laughs> let's face it. These movies aren't kind of in the holiday uh, transit station where people are too busy returning their tickets uh um, but of course, The Strange Ones is a movie about the road trip that doesn't go as planned kind of movie, uh, kind of like The Hitcher, all those other movies. And these two main characters must learn to fight forces against them, even if it means, um, if, even if it means to make it back at, at, at any means so they can make it back home. But when you cannot even trust your own travel, bud, things can go up to 11th gear. This is a movie like I have, basically this movie is like how I described and so can you. I, I, don't, I don't know. Anyways, I have another movie for you guys, and it is from the flagship program. This is Flagship Friday, Double Date. And when I come back, I'll talk about some city council. They're talking about the uh, Colon Ditch property and also some um, development happening at the Montana Rail Link Park. Boyfriend. <laughs> uh, sure. Girl, you're so lucky. I wish I had a boyfriend. Well, hey, my boyfriend has a a friend. Maybe I can ask him if he can ask his friend if you want to go on a date. Hey, wait, can you find my girlfriend a boyfriend? Thanks. Okay. So, I have a girlfriend who has a friend. Uh, uh do you want to meet her? First of all, yes, with a girlfriend. Congratulations. Thank you. And as meeting who? No. Why? Because she's ugly, probably. No, she, I've seen her. She's at her. But well, it's on 1 to 10. Okay. Just do it. I'll go set up an appointment. Hey, me. What? You no. nervous? Okay. Just shut up and let's get back into the beatbox. Hi. Uh, hi. Oh, it went great. The first three seconds that I looked in his eyes, it felt like a lifetime together. <laughs> oh. So, what's up? My homie. How'd your date go? It, I, I got the skills to pay the bills. The, the first three seconds I saw who, I saw who. Did you cut this yourself? Girl, you know I did. <laughs> Me and my boyfriend have been dating for like a week now, and and it's getting kind of boring. I know how you feel. We're just open to new ideas, but it's kind of I have an weird. idea. I have an idea. What the heck happened here? Double date at lunch. Okay? We're going on a double date at lunch. 
So don't embarrass me in front of my girlfriend. We've been dating for like a week now. It's really official. Oh, dude, that's amazing. And you know, if you want to be cool like me and get all the ladies, um, you need to show up late. Why would I want to show up late? Wait, no, fashionably late. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was fashionably late. Ugh. Finally, we can get this double date to start it. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for your city council report, which means it's time for this camera. Um, so city council, they were talking about some uh, project happening over at the uh, ne next to the uh, the old train track um, up on Brook Street, and they want to make a Montana Railing Park, ML, um, MRL Park, they call it. So they kick things off. Uh, they recommendation and construction of MRL Park project during the 2018 construction season, concurrently with the construction of the last segment of the Bitterroot Trail. But of course, in order to take advantage of the potential economic of scale by constructing the project uh, concurrently and to minimize disruption of the neighborhood, the more, most favorable bidding climate occurs before the middle of March. While contractors are seeking uh, work for the construction season, however, it will be challenging to compete, uh, complete construction documents for the MRL pro uh, park project by early March. So uh, here is Ellen Buchanan, kind of gives a little background and talking a little bit more about this project. There are a couple of reasons for wanting to, to proceed this way. One is that we uh, basically got the trail connection between North and South Avenues designed and ready to go out to bid. Um, because of a fairly lengthy uh, public process that parks wanted to use uh, with respect to what elements might be in the MRL park and how it might be designed to suit the neighborhood, uh, that project is, is kind of lagging behind the trail project. The trail project obviously is much more straightforward. Um, <clears throat> The ideal bidding climate in Missoula for the past, since I've been here probably, has been to bid projects in the winter months when contractors are not busy and um, you get better attention, you get more bids, you get uh, better pricing because people are lining up their work for the, for the construction season. So if we use this method on this project, we will be able to select a contractor at about 70% design, which will allow us to lock in unit prices um, <clears throat> in before mid-March. We use this successfully on park place, parking structure, and um, more recently on Mary Avenue West. Also, this is a, the methodology that was used to build Fort Missoula Regional Park, and I think everybody feels like it's a pretty successful, efficient way to go about doing construction projects. All right, so the city of Missoula is moving forward on trying to get this thing going. Um, one can say that the trail is on the right path, while the park is uh, is basically getting on track. Okay, <laughs> they have, of course, they have the money and plans in place. They just need to line everything up, 
killing two birds with one stone will require two birds. Um, so the city approved the consent agenda to alternate construction contractors to be a part of the planning process. Um, this will be on the uh, later items to be referred to on Monday's city council meeting coming up next. We got land use and planning. So land use and planning. Um, this request for the Colon Ditch properties. I was I was telling you guys on Wednesday that they're going to be talking about the Colon Ditch properties um, in terms of uh, basically how they want to uh, adjust this neighborhood because uh, gentrification seems to be a big thing that's happening here in the city of Missoula. So this is a neighborhood, a cul-de-sac and everything in the Colon Ditch area. And what they want to do is they want to uh, have a 10 plus unit complex built on that site so they can um, house people. So basically, um, here's John Debari, um, city council uh, member, uh, kind of reflecting on what this is all about. There has already been a substantial public record created as a part of this process, and none of that has disappeared. That is all still in the public record. It is still available for anyone who's interested in this project to review. And I guess I'm mentioning this too for the benefit of, of the neighbors. I know you guys took a substantial amount of time to come in and make comments and I just want to let you know that, that you don't have to necessarily come back and make those same comments again. You're totally welcome to if you'd like, but all of the contributions that you made and your fellow neighbors made are still a part of the record and are still um, totally within the, um, the purview of council and, and everyone else to, to read and consider as, as this process moves forward. So I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of that. All right. So, um, of course, here's a little background. On the past couple of committee meetings that I've um, done and the city council, um, the biggest issue that happened uh, with the Colonage properties is that the city of Missoula claimed that they sent letters out to the neighborhood saying that this is going to happen in the city zoning areas. But unfortunately, most people didn't get this letter. And um, it was a uh, ongoing. And then um, the city was like, oh, yeah, right. I'm sure you just said that. And then people was like, no, we actually didn't get any kind of letter. So they did research, and it turns out that they were uh, improperly informed about this coal and dish property, so they actually had to uh, put it back to committee, which it is back here today. And they're talking about it. Of course, most people in the neighborhood aren't really happy with this kind of gentrification because it seems to be like an ongoing thing. Most other neighborhoods kind of showed their uh, disdain towards these kind of uh, buildings getting built in their neighborhoods anyways. But of course, here's Mary McRae with Development Services, shows the area that the city wants to develop. Just kind of give you guys a little bit of um, context exactly where this is going to take place. Now I'd like to cover the development in the surrounding area. The majority of the development is single dwelling residential and duplex residential with multi dwelling residential across Grove Street in Orchard Gardens. In terms of lot sizes, directly to the north is Streamside subdivision within the city limits where the lot sizes are generally between 6,000 and 9,000 square feet. Radislaw subdivision also within the city located to the south, has preliminary plat approval for lots generally between 6,000 and 9,000 square feet. All right, so just uh, kind of a, uh, an idea. Of course, you can already probably tell by now that the red area right around here is the area that they want to develop and put the 10-unit complex uh, for uh, housing and apart, kind of like condo type deals. Um, these are kind of like uh, cul-de-sac areas with housing and, you know, like big areas. This is about a 10.86 acre lot that the city is going to be zoning for these units to have higher density housing as well. So that's just a little bit of background and a little bit of like um, pictures and maps to kind of show you guys um, what's going on with that. Okay, here is uh, he, our next quote is from uh, Paul Forsythe uh, with the Colon Ditch Properties LLC. And this is what he had to say about this and um, how he, um, he's addressing a lot of the concerns. You know, it's been a very positive project for us with regards to how the review has went. Um, we've had had a lot of, I guess, when, you know, meeting with the city and, and talking to the different agencies. We've received support, and um, we've got, uh, you know, an engineer, uh, engineer support from just the conceptual plans we provided, and we've we've uh, elaborated on some of those. We've gotten um, a staff report from the planning department um, for approval of this, and so, and I know we don't sit in front of with us with the layout today, and so I'll just kind of end there, saying I'm I'm available to help with any comments, but regarding to the annexation, you know, this is. We're very excited that this 
um, annexation will accommodate the project that is proposed. So thanks, everybody. All right. So the next person that we have is a, uh, one of the people who lives in the neighborhood. This is Morgan Hershenberger, who is a concerned homeowner, honor, homeowner, but is also willing to work with uh, the de de developers for this project. There's two things that I think that I'd like to make clear. Number one is that um, I don't think that we're – most of us in our community are not against this project. Um, we're against some of the key characteristics of the, of the, the buildings themselves that are going to be directly adjacent to our property line. Um, we've really kind of consolidated down to what our, our objections are, and we've realized that, you know, a traffic problem and some of these things are not necessarily the concerns of this developer in their, their own right. And they shouldn't be held to, um, hey, there's a problem with traffic on Grove and 3rd. That's, um, that's not necessarily their specific problem. Um, and so one of, the, one of the nice things is, is that the developer has offered uh, to meet with us, so we do have a uh, meeting with the developer tomorrow. And uh, we really hope that we can come to a situation where we're back here and not only fighting, not fighting against this project, but where I can actually speak on behalf of the community that says we're actually in support of this project. Um, and I think that that uh, coordination is important. Um, the, uh, the, we're not against the project, and I haven't talked to anybody in our community that's at all against the open space. We are all absolutely proponents of the open space. I think that that park project is going to be cool. Um, Thirteen years ago when we bought our property that's directly adjacent to the proposed development, um, we, there was talk of um, taking that trail through and across the river, and it, it's going to be something that's really neat. And I just I, I hope that we can come to some agreement with the developer on um, the specific buildings that are going to be directly on the property boundary of our of our existing development. And I think if we can find some middle ground and do a little bit of transition between um, how our development is done and maintain some of our light, um, particularly of concern is the the light that is going to be blocked out. These buildings that are. Um, right now part of the plan are uh, 25 feet tall, 56 feet wide with only 15 feet in between them. That creates, a, if and they're all along the south border, and so what that does is on a day like this weekend was, which is cold days with sunshine, we're going to lose absolutely all the sunshine in our house um, if these buildings are approved as they are. And so, um, and that's the major concerns of the majority of our property neighbors that we've gotten together and had some more discussion. And so um, uh, that's all I wanted to say is I think that it's really neat that the developer has been uh, open and approached us to um, meeting and discussing and seeing if we can't find something to make this development something that's uh, not only something the community is not fighting, but something the community can get behind and support. All right. So that was uh, Morgan Hershenberger uh, with the uh, neighborhood, uh, kind of, I guess, speaking for a lot of the people in the neighborhoods who have concerns about the Colon Ditch Property LLC development of this um, basically uh, high-density uh, housing complex that will be available. Um, this last note is a nice little thing by uh, Heather Harp, who is a new city council member, talking about how uh, grateful she is for Morgan Hershenberger and other people in this neighborhood and the people working on these projects. You know, I know there was a technical snafu with the notification process, um, but I, I think the fact that, that the, there was an outpouring of your community brought neighbors t together for maybe the first time, I think was an absolutely remarkable feat. And I think working together with Territorial and as well as the city to, uh, and the developer themselves to, cr to come together to try and bring uh, a, a design that's compatible, I think is the ultimate goal. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that uh, was uh, Heather Harp. Um, and that basically kind of concludes your city. Uh, oh, sorry about that. Ugh. Did it freeze on me? Oh, no, it didn't. I just, there we go. Sorry about that. Of course, the resolution of <laughs> intention was approved by the city and will be discussed further with gathering information on how they wish to move forward on this project. February 5th is the next public hearing on this meeting with developers and Colon Ditch neighborhoods. Of course, they, uh, the developers and the Colon Ditch neighborhood neighbors in that area already met with the, uh, the Colon Ditch LLC property management developers yesterday. So... Um, that's kind of what's happened with the city council. If you are interested at all in looking at looking up uh, your city council and seeing what's up with the city of Missoula, go to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website, and I, I suggest you guys go check it out. There's always jobs and other things that you guys can find out about working for the city. There's always some cool things happening. Um, 
you know, like you, this is basically how you can get permits for doing different things in the city of Missoula. So if you want to be like, hey, I want to uh, chop down this tree, you, ha you go to the set website and do all that stuff. But also you can go to uh, all the meetings and uh, all the videos that I just showed you is from this website itself. But unfortunately, if this uh, website is giving you any kind of trouble, you can always refer to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your source for everything Missoula from your government to education to um just general public stuff. So that's just uh, a, a nice little short way um, to transition to our next topic, which will be our sports. So uh, this uh, Saturday, MCAT will be hosting sports. Um, we'll be streaming sports on our Facebook page. Um, all you got to do is go to Missoula's Community Media Resource to watch those sports. Um, one of our kids uh, did a little behind-the-scenes uh, video of it. Um, I'll put a link on this video. I put the link on this video as well. That's going to be on YouTube. So you guys can um, see the full video in all its unedited, uncut rawness. But I cut it down a little bit so I could air it on it, my morning show this morning. So here it is. And when I come back, I'm going to tell you about all the art stuff you guys can check out this Friday, including my art documentary, which which is going to be playing at the Florence Hotel. So stay with me, and I'll talk about that and more right after this little behind-the-scenes, behind-the-basketball MCAT teen story. Okay, I started. So this is, uh, right this is usually how uh, our varsity filming starts out every day. <laughs> we play... We play um, I can edit fight. it for you guys if you want me to. Sure. Austin's Austin's <laughs> a really chill dude. Yeah, you know? yeah Austin's like yes, one of the he, coolest guys here. He's like the coolest. He just doesn't know when to stop laughing. He just doesn't know. And yeah. this is our manager, so... Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna dock uh, you. I, I'm not sure manager's the correct word. Uh, <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> you're fired! Oh. Here we are. Um, yeah, no, we're ready. headed out right now. We're heading right out. We're I going got... to Sentinel. That's how people get views. They just remember. Just, uh, yeah, you walk around and just talk about. People it. like 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 in reality shows. <laughs> they're like, hey, I love this person's life. This play person's life's interesting. And apparently, when when we're a bunch of a uh, group of uh, sarcastic uh, teenagers um, filming a game, not seriously. Yeah. <laughs> well, I no. I'm taking it serious. I'm taking it as seriously as possible if you didn't know. Why do they call it a movie? Yeah, yeah. You document movie. everything. Document everything. You document every. Document everything, Jack. Uh, you want me to? Yeah, Please document everything. Please you're back there. Me, Neil needs to we're, know. We're, yes. Ah, Jake. So, uh... How do you, uh, so focus on this? You ever put a... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah that's 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 you don't. Um... <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Wow, they're such a potato. You know, I was thinking we should actually do like a reality show <gasps> where it's about you trying to be the best gamer on the planet and then one of us always shows you up. <laughs> it's starting <laughs> right now. Hey, Neil, can we, can we go into the subway and just yell at <laughs> Let's Simon and be like, get a job. <laughs> get a job. No, no, no. Get a real job. Get a life. No more games. Okay, we all have to walk Get a girlfriend. one at a time and then exit and say, rev up those fryers. <laughs> Rev up those fryers. I'm having the usual. Rev up those fryers. I'll have the usual. Rev up those fryers. I'll have the usual. This for all my friends, by the way. Rev up those fryers. Now that I know he's there, can you tell me whenever he's gonna work? Uh, look how video famous we are. Oh, look at me. Just look at me. <laughs> Look at me. Okay, I'll look at you. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. What's this stuff? What's this stuff? What this stuff? Wait, wait, just say it. Say what? What's this stuff? What this stuff? You, uh, oh, this? Yeah, oh, you can grab it. The... <laughs> you can do the heavy lifting. Yeah, you can do the heavy lifting because it's funny to see you struggle. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Here's uh -huh. Austin. Here's here's your temporary uh, cameraman. <laughs> Drive off, dude. dude. Elevator. What if it just like breaks down? That'd be so funny. And the Vader ride. Like we would. So that die. corner. Rev up those that corner. tires. Oh, whoa! Oh, wow. Second like time. That's it. That's it. That's it. Stuck. It's stuck oh. now. Level oh, two. He's stuck in an elevator. No. Good. That would have been really funny. Go go camera focus. 
Oh, we got personal curtains now, Rowan. It's, yeah, nice. Makes great filling material. <laughs> yeah, look at that. As you can see, this is Sentinel, one of the best. You see that? They actually have a podium. There's boys. That is for that. That right there. That's for the band. So we're all ready for the game. We're just gonna wait a couple more minutes. Yeah, we're professionals. Four hours. Yeah. That Sweet means forty dough. bucks minus tax, which equals like thirty-six dollars. Yeah. I do it for fun. And fun, yeah. I That's do it more one. for fun, but money's nice, I guess. I just started coming here and they gave me a job at 14. I was like, <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be taking an adventure with me now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach them about the true value of things. And the yes. true, the true riches are right here. Hey, yeah. Can you spot me a dollar for popcorn? I thought there weren't six halves in a hole. What if they just never end this game? You gotta be kidding me. Overtime. Ah! Bozeman doesn't do anything. This is history, We're man. A... Well, the third overtime has commenced. You see that? It's period eight. We're four overtime. We're literally like entire game's worth of overtime. Oh! Five over time. Yeah. Oh, I still have energy. I could probably go till three in the morning. You know what I gotta say about Sentinel's water fountains? They suck. Okay, so guys, mark the time. So thus our game has ended. Candy cane! Uh, Rowan, grab that candy cane. <laughs> <laughs> I got video evidence that Rowan is a candy cane I'm murderer. Also, they had a crime. You're being sued. <laughs> <laughs> they call it the rib cruncher. Okay, everyone. Right everyone, how did you like the game? Try getting out uh, here and take a left. Five overtimes. Five so like yeah. better than so four. Like, um, what do you gotta say? So I, I mean, <laughs> say oh, the game. somebody yeah. get out and close the trunk. It's <laughs> yeah. not closed all the way. Go, Jack. Me? I'm already buckled. I, I'm Aren't the, you buckled? I'm no, the, go. I'm in no, the close the trunk. trunk. Oh, the trunk. Okay. Yeah. Did you know that somebody actually said that though? Like Bush does not. Dude, it's Max. Wait. Wait. Yeah, here. Max! 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 You're a babe, I love you! What the f <laughs> 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 Dude skeleton! Oh. <sighs> Camera. Heavy lifting and hard work is a way to get to uh, work with the soul. I better get an extra hundred bucks. And end and this video with a meme. Yes, and the meme is. Alright, well, we're back. There's a little uh, behind the scenes of some of the tomfoolery some of those teens do. I, I swear they actually work, but um, when they weren't working, they were filming some of their antics. So, um, most. <laughs> Alright, so that's just a little bit of that. Now, here's some more of some uh, First Friday stuff. So, if you guys are interested in going out to First Friday, we'll kick things off with. Nature. Oils by Laura Blue Palmer. The artist shop is hosting the collection of birds that she finds beautiful and a variety of landscape scenes. The birds are in portrait form, each painted realistically, and they're usually in frames. And uh, m the study uh, is from the backyard. Uh, the landscapes are a continuum of light study, including memories of sunsets and places that she has visited. The show runs from January 2nd through the 21st, so you have until the end of the month to check it out. John Floridas is hosting this, um, uh, it's not really hosting, but he's gonna be performing at the uh, Lake Missoula Tea Company um, art exhibi exhibition of August Christian and John Floridas. Of course, it's collages, guitar, free tea at Lake Missoula Tea Company. Of course, he served, um, August Christian served in Vietnam. 
and received many awards, including a Purple Heart, Army Accommodation Medal of Honor, um, bron uh, Air Medal, sorry, and Bronze Star. Rather than inhabiting, inhibiting his creative energies, his war-influenced trauma impelled his military experience into art. So you get to check that out. It's going to be at Lake Missoula Tea Company. And just so you go, all these arts are happening at 5 p.m. Um, they all, all art things happen. And spin, uh, speaking of art, Missoula Art Museum is the place to be every first Friday of, of the month. So benefit art auction ex exhibition reception. And this is part of a basically 43 year tradition. Actually, this 46th annual benefit auction, including works donated by nationally renowned artists such as John Buck, Beth Lowe, uh, Stephen Young Lee, and Wendy Red Star. The benefit art auction is MAM's largest fundraising of the year. It provides critical support for MAM's contemporary art e e exhibitions, education programs, and their long standing commitment to free admission, free expression. The, the auction will take place at the University Center Ballroom at the University of Montana on February 3rd, 2018. This is kind of like like a reception event, they'd be like, hey, we're doing this event, come on down, it's going to happen. And I think because uh, February 3rd is happening on a Saturday, which is, so they'll probably be talking about this again for February's first Friday, which happens on Groundhog Day, which is February 2nd. Uh, moving on to the next thing, we got uh, Julie uh, Gautier Downs. Um, um, Dioramas of Disaster. E3 Convergence Gallery is hosting some dioramas of disasters. It kick off the 2018 with work by Julie Downs and pho photographs and installations. Uh, they lead viewers on a journey through abandoned houses, creating both the visual and emotional experiences of places that she has explored. Each method offers a different angle of, of inquiry that feeds her pursuit of connection of absent figures. Um, of course, the photograph installation, they will engage in audiences and multi-sensory self experiences, use found objects, photographs, furniture, and building materials to explore emotional resonance of abandoned domestic spaces. Uh, the next one is we got a climbing photography exhibition. At, it's going to be at uh, Freestone Climbing. Do you want to explore the art in climbing halls, not gallery walls? How about the opportunity to check out the brand new tall building around the corner from the Clay Studio? They'll have it here is your chance. Western Montana Climbing Coalition is unveiling a permanent uh, jured photo e exhibition in Freestone Gym the large photo celebration of beauty of the local climbing areas and the community inhabits then. Wouldn't it be funny if they decided to put the artwork on the top of each of the climbing walls so you have to climb up there to enjoy the art? That would be pretty cool. Um, but of course, my documentary is going to be happening at the Florence building, which is that this building, that building right there, and you just go to it, third floor, it's wonderful. I have a clip from that as well. So I'm going to uh, round this off with uh, the last thing. It's going to be happening at the Florence building starting at 5 p.m. It's my documentary. You should check it out. It's wonderful and great. Um, what else do I need to talk about? Um, kind of showed everything that I needed to show. So without further ado, <laughs> here is a little taste of my documentary. It's only about 14 minutes, 38 seconds long. And it'll be playing um, on loop pretty much all night long at the uh, submittable um, um, offices on the third floor building in the Florence Hotel, the old Florence Hotel. It's not a current hotel. It's like a, now it's like a business building. Anyways, without further ado, here's a clip. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about other events that you guys can check out this week as well. All the creatures on here are kind of, you know, going somewhere. There's movement and travel. And his little friend, the dragonfly, is taking him up the river. And then the fish on the side are also it's like swimming up the river. And because people are exiting and coming into Missoula and everybody loves, you know, water sports and fishing and and then the back, because Missoula is such like a garden city. I used to do really big murals. You know, I'd be on a ladder on top of a van, like up in a building, and I did you know, over the city of Kingston, this whole side of a um, utility building for the city of Kingston revitalization project. And so I've always loved, I can really translate up really big. So I get to use my big giant chunky brushes makes me very happy <laughs> just to even do this, you know. <laughs> Yeah, the thing about watching your own documentary is that you start noticing all the mistakes you made <laughs> in terms of like sound uh, mixing and all that stuff. But let's move on to some events that are happening. Starting this morning is the development and preschool screening. Desmet School is hosting a free development and preschool screening clinic for children's age uh, birth to five years of age. And it will be held today, beginning at 9 a.m. And it will happen until 12. 
noon today, the Dismet Elementary School. Um, you can schedule an appointment. This free screening will include uh, gross, monitor, uh, gross motor, fine motor, language concepts, communication concepts, communication skills, hearing and vision screening. So if your kid is at a certain age and you're looking at uh, check, getting a nice little checkup on those kids and see how well they're doing, just to kind of like, it's, it's just basically a quick checkup about basic, uh, about where they're at in their development stage in their life. Of course, um, if you want your kids to do some tumbling and some cool little tricks and gymnastics stuff, um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo and Bitter Gymnastics starts hosting things as early as 9.30 in the morning. And you guys have foam pits. It's basically, it's a whole entire padded building facility where kids can be safe while also being able to explore their bodies in a gymnastic sort of way. Uh, Tiny Tales and Storytime at Missoula Public Library starts at 10.30 a.m. Um, these are, uh, Storytime is for uh, older kids between three and five. Storytime is for ages uh, birth to three years of age. And toddlers in Storytime will get a chance to learn nine new words a day. So uh, that's kind of like their thing. Um, Hovercrafts, Spectrum Discovery Area. The Spectrum Discovery Area is open for all visitors of all ages to explore. It's at their new location at 812 Tool Avenue. 350 for anyone four and over. If you're under three, you get in free. Discovery Bench Activity Day is the Squishy Circuits. This week in the Makerspace is Hovercrafts. Um, of course... Missoula Public Library is doing yarns and watercolor starting at 12 today. If you're interested in learning about watercolors, they have limited space. Yarns, limited space again. You can always call them at 721-BOOK to uh, book your reservation for any of these two uh, events. Yarns is basically you learn to stitch and sew and all that stuff. Watercolor is watercolor. Um, Cribbage and Bridge, if you're interested in gaming, um, um, it's uh, Missoula Senior Center hosts Cribbage and or bridge, you guys can choose or do both, and it's going to be at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 12:30 today. Teen Riders Group is starting at 3:30 in the afternoon, and why not? Because, um, like I said on Wednesday, um, Missoula Public Library, Library is doing a writing contest, and you have until Valentine's Day, uh, February 16th. I think it's Valentine's Day. I'm not sure, but February 16th is when the submission to a writing contest is being done. It's for kids basically aged nine all the way to 19, because 19 has their own category. Um, 16 through 18 has their own category. So many different categories, and top prize is $100 just for writing, and that's happening at the Missoula Public Library. And Teen Writers Group is a great way to kind of uh, work on your writing skills before you submit it as well. Family Friendly Friday is starting at the Top Hat from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Top Hat Lounge. Bring your kids and you get a, some drink specials. Yeah, great. Uh, Bruins hockey game is happening at the Musical Fairgrounds tonight as well. Um, they will be taking on... Um, Oh, it doesn't say what they're taking on, but <laughs> it's at the uh, Glacier Ice Rink, um, 1101 South Avenue West, Missoula, Montana. 59801 is the zip code. <laughs> Bruins hockey game. It's happening tonight at 7 p.m. 7.30. Um, Nashville 406 is going to be, be playing at the Eagles Lodge. It's country music. You got R R Rot Gut Wines and Breakfast for Dinner at the VFW. Uh, you got Idle Ranch Hands at the Union Club. And you got Blue Collar at the Sunrise Saloon happening this Friday night as well. Uh, First Friday is a great way to get out and check out some of the art stuff. But if you guys stick around a little bit longer, you can check out some of these music and other venues that are happening in the beautiful downtown Missoula area. It's a great way to basically hop w among indoors while staying out of the cold. Um, but that basically kind of concludes everything that's happening for your Friday night. Uh, do I dare show another clip or should I just, oh, I'll just, yeah, it's like, four, I have like 12 more minutes. So I'll just, um, I'll breeze on through <laughs> Saturday and Saturday morning. Ski shuttle to snowball. So if you are, in, if you like skiing and you're interested in basically doing a nice little carpool, uh, a ski shuttle is being hosted by Montana Adventure Shuttles. They usually go to Glacier Park a lot of times, but this time they're going to Snowball. So this is uh, um, the whole idea is that they start at 8.30 a.m. and they pick up at Missoula Fresh Market off Broadway and they return at 3 p.m. or at 4.30 p.m. Um, of course, you can see the website for pricing details and more. Uh, you can book online or you can call them at 406-493-2345 to reserve your group seat. You can email them at info at mtshuttle.com. Um, yeah, it, you just take a shuttle up to Snowball. 
Uh, skate for free day at Glacier Ice Rink starting at 10 a.m. Free skating and skate rentals, um, plus registration for the Mo Missoula Figure Skating Clubs. Learn to skate USA group classes and receive a $10 discount. Free skating runs from 10 to 11.30 a.m. Includes skating tips from professional coaches. Um, it's a great way just to, uh, and it's also a great excuse to just be like, okay, it's about time I actually learn to skate. Because when you're on the ice, and a lot of people have a tendency to fall a lot often, it's a good chance to like if you know how to skate you pretty much can do anything on ice um <laughs> bug sickle art um that's that's happening at noon on saturday the moth we will be learning about um, about where bugs go in the winter time some of them will survive in the egg larva pupate or even adult stage by becoming bug sickles come learn about where some of the bugs around montana go in the winter time while making well, we make bugs out of popsicle sticks uh, and or bug sickles, as they call it. And this happens between 12 and 2 p.m. tomorrow. And, of course, Bruins, again, is doing a game against uh, um, Helena at Glacier Ice Rink. Um, so M M Missoula Bruins versus Helena at Glacier Ice Rink starting at 7.30 p.m. Tonight, uh, tomorrow night. Um, doors open at 6.30 p.m. Um, but, of course, if you're interested in some folk dancing, Missoula Folklore Society Contra Dance is doing a union hall swing away with uh, – we'll provide music uh julie call um will call um so it's like swing your partner around around she'll basically tell you what to do uh six dollars for members nine dollars for non-members under 18 is free so if you're under the age of 18 and you want to do this kind of dancing it's happening from 8 to 11 p.m all ages welcome workshop is at 7 30 all dances taught and called no partner necessary because the whole idea of this particular dance is that you change partners every five seconds uh, i've done it before it's pretty awesome <laughs> January 20th, Sassafras will provide music with Julie Call at the Union Hall. Um, and it's $6 members. Yeah, it, it, it's like the same thing they wrote, but of course, they, they just did another uh, day. They're doing it tomorrow night, and then, of course, they're doing it two weeks, late, uh, two weeks later on January 20th. So, um, checking the time real quick. That's kind of what... That's kind of what's happening. That's basically everything. I kind of like breeze through most of the stuff. Um, some Saturday late night events. Um, if you're interested, uh, MissoulaEvents.net is a great resource. Absolutely, with Chris Moon at the Badlander. You got karaoke at VFW. You got Northern Lights, Sunrise Saloon, Country Music, Sled Sled Mud Slide Charlie. Uh, I was saying Sled Sled uh, Blide. I don't know. Anyways, uh, Folk Inception is going to be happening at Top Hat Lounge. So. All sorts of uh, wonderful venues happening, and you can get all that and more by going to MissoulaEvents.net. If you are interested in being a part of MCAT or learning more about our programs here, you can go to MCAT.org. Um, tomorrow, Saturday drop-ins return, um, so if you're interested in doing Saturday drop-in animation, these are for kids age 8 to 14. I said 9 to 13, but we've been pretty loose when it comes to certain ages. We have a 14-year-old, and we do have an 8-year-old, so I decided just to update and be like, 8 to 14 doesn't matter. And this is a great way for kids to uh, do some stop animation, do some live action. This is a very a mixed media kind of uh, drop-in day for kids. Happens from 1 to 5 p.m. So if you are planning on taking any of those Christmas gifts that you received back to the store, Saturday will be the day to do it. You drop your kids off for five hours and then take back all the stuff that you don't want Get with all the gift receipts that you got along with the items that you got for Christmas this weekend. So check that out. Um, this Saturday, it's going to be happening from 1 to 5. It's $10 per kid. Um, someday it will be free, but until then, it's going to be $10 per kid. It's four hours. It's, two, it's like $2.50 an hour. It's great. It's like babysitting. Anyways, um, um, so that's basically it. If you want more information about my show and all the uh, little short videos that I've shown you, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula, or you can just Google Wake Up Missoula, and you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. If you look, click on videos on this link on right here, you can see the last episode. You can see Flagship Friday. You can see uh, other fun little videos that were made over the last couple weeks. Um, and of course, I want to um, promote my dub and stuff. So dub and stuff uh, will be coming back hopefully next week. But all the dub and stuff I've done over the year is about two hours long, and it's airing on MCAT throughout the, uh, for a little while at least. Um, but you can also be able to watch the whole thing on YouTube as well. All you got to look up is Wake Up Missoula. So... Woo! <laughs> That's about it. Um, be sure to check out my documentary. I'll be there. I'll answer some questions. Uh, Public Art Committee um, um, uh, sanctioned this uh, documentary to happen um, with the help of 
Missoula Goose Community Media Resource, MCAT, uh, and it, which made it possible, and it was a great little documentary, and it tells people of all walks of life how to uh, um, basically get paid to be an artist here in Missoula and basically paint traffic signal boxes and learn more about these traffic signal boxes. So without further ado, um, I want to thank you guys for joining me. It's been it's a great Friday. I'm pretty much done for the rest of the day. So uh, thank you guys, and I hope you have a good weekend. MCAT will be open our regular hours, uh, 11 to 7, um, Tuesday through Friday. So anybody who wants to come down here can come on down here, 500 North Higgins Street, 105. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thank mm -hmm. you.